What's up guys? So tonight I will be drilling all the holes in the frame to attach sheet metal, cutting all that sheet metal, and then doing a mock-up on the actual mill that you can kind of see behind me. So I'm gonna try something a little bit different tonight. I'm gonna kind of do a voiceover with the time lapse. So here I am just kind of getting ready to start drilling all of those holes. Um, these are the, the holes that I am going to use to bolt the sheet metal to the frame. I ended up using a number six here. So this is a little bit over an eighth inch diameter if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, it was just mark, um, center punch it, and drill it, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think it was like 60-something screw holes. So, yeah, it took forever. Um, I didn't even put all the footage in here because it was just so much. But, yeah, here, this is just a little snippet of it. So then I flipped it over, um, drill on the other side, so now it's actually upside down. So the sheet metal that connects to this front part will actually be hanging over the, the base of the mill. Uh, it's kind of that little overhang in the front. All right, so I went ahead and drilled all of those holes for the um, sheet metal to attach to the frame. And then I did one last mock-up and for the first time so far, the mock-up has actually identified a problem that needed to be fixed. So check it out. So when I cut these vertical pieces for the door frame right here, yeah, those, that one there, and that one there, I cut them a little long, I guess, because even when it was on the ground and I was kind of mocking everything up, um, I kind of had to pull up or push down on um, either the bottom or the top to kind of squeeze the piece in. And I didn't think it was a big deal because I didn't have to do it very hard or anything. It was just kind of, just with your hand, just kind of push it up. And it turned out that it was a big deal. Um, I put this thing on the mill today and this bottom row that's not reinforced by the door, like the top has this nice big piece to keep everything straight, but this bottom does not. This thing was bowed down, I um, wouldn't say significantly, like I really had to you know, think about whether I really wanted to tear into this and fix it or just live with it, um, but enough to you know, cause concern. So what I did was I went ahead and took these two bolts back out and just kind of let this piece go inward so that it wasn't sitting on the top lip of the angle anymore. And you can see it actually went down. It dropped like an eighth of an inch or so on this side. So I was like, man, that's not good. I probably should fix that. And then on this side, it was actually even worse. So what I did was I just put, you can still see my setup over here. I grabbed a piece of scrap angle that, so it's an eighth inch thick, um, clamped it inside here so that stuff wouldn't bend. And then I just used my existing bracket here as a drill guide to fix the holes. So they're not pretty. So it's not pretty on this side anymore. The holes are not round, they are oval, but you're not really gonna see it anyway. It'll be behind the door. So now the next step for at least this front portion is going to be to take everything off and grind those two posts shorter so that they fit. But before that, since it's already on the mill, 
I'm gonna go ahead and cut some sheet metal for that side, that side, and at least one, maybe two pieces for the back and get those knocked out. All right, time for some sheet metal, finally. This has been, you know, what, five or six weeks in the making for this? So when I got the sheet metal, it came in 10 foot long strips. And so I had them cut it um, at like about 45 inches wide for me, just all the way across. And that was so that it would fit in the back of my truck and it would also give me some wiggle room for um, the two sides, because they're about 44 inches wide. And then the third piece, because I bought three sheets, I figured I would just use that 45 inch wide piece as um, one of the back pieces. It's a little bit over half of the, the width of the back. And it actually worked out pretty well. So this is gonna be the left side that I'm cutting right now. And that little chunk I'm taking out is so that it will um, fit with the front pan area because that part angles up. Yeah, this is the little um, kind of screw holes or whatever you want to call it. The areas where those bolts go through. You gotta cut all that out so that it'll fit flush with the, the metal, with the metal frame. So this is my first time using sheet metal shears like that and I know it's aluminum so it's gonna cut easy anyway, but man, I really didn't think they'd do that well. That was amazing, it cuts like butter. Here it is, full disclosure, that was like the fourth or fifth mock-up there before it was ever actually right, but that one went in nicely. And next up, we're gonna cut the, the back piece for it. So this will line up against that side piece that we just did. And just a close-up little shot. This one was actually one of the cuts where it was getting snagged up on stuff, but um, it was cutting a lot smoother and a lot easier. My biggest thing was I'd have to slide forward just to um, you know, reach the tool because some of these cuts are so long, but, but that thing worked pretty good. So my camera's memory card actually filled all the way up when I was cutting that sheet metal, so you only got to see a couple pieces, but I don't think you really wanted to sit around and watch all that get cut anyway. So check it out. This is what I ended up with for this week. So here's the left side, and then the back is made up of two pieces. Uh, the seam is kind of behind the actual mill there. It's kind of hard to see, but that's a good thing. You shouldn't have huge seams. And then I got the right side on there too. And then I'll still need to cut the two pieces of the front here, the two sides. So I put a kibosh on the rivet idea and just went ahead with old school, you know, screws and nuts. And the reason for that is when the rivet goes in from this direction, um, you know, it doesn't have a lot of area for, to keep the aluminum from pulling off of it. So I was a little bit nervous about that. And so I figured I'd just go ahead and go with trusted old nuts and bolts and screw this thing together. I still haven't welded all this stuff together. I went ahead and just put it on the mill as is. Uh, and then I figured I would get everything uh, fitted to it and then weld everything. But even with um, the three panels in here, it has gotten so much more sturdy and it makes sense because these are taking all that shear force out of it and uh, just keeping everything square for me. Um, it's kind of crazy. You can see this bottom panel will actually flop when I, when I push on this because there's no screws in the bottom. And so I was planning on leaving it without any screws, um, just to, you know, make it a little cleaner, make it easier to remove and install and everything. But I think it will add to the structure 
quite a bit if I put a couple screws, you know, along this bottom edge here. Sorry, it's a little dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that too in the final design, as well as, um, you can see it over here where it's brighter. Like over here, see how I've got some play still? Yeah, like, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, put another screw in between every screw. So I'll cut the, the distance from screws in half, basically. And I think that'll really add the to the rigidity. And um, the other thing is when I'm sealing all this stuff in, if this is flopping like this, it's gonna break that seal. The silicone's not gonna wanna you know, move that much. So I think if I put a couple more screws in each panel, it'll keep everything nice and secure and hopefully keep this thing sealed up and watertight. The other thing I'm a little concerned about, but not too bad, is all these little corners, like right there and right there, where I had to um, cut kind of around those nuts. Uh, the plan is just to use like a caulking that I've seen. It's like the Sika brand or Sika and kind of just seal it as best I can to the, the angle iron behind it and hope that all works out. Otherwise, who knows, we might have to go a little, little Western and get some like waterproof gorilla tape or, you know, do what you got to do. This is homemade, but yeah, that's one thing I'm kind of regretting. I, I probably should have countersunk them from the inside and then I could have not had to cut this. I could have just ran aluminum all the way down over the bolt hole but you live, you learn, too late now. I think the next thing I need to actually really figure out and work on is going to be how I wanna do a roof on this thing. Um, I think I might actually try and bend some of this aluminum. I don't have a break, but I have a lot of leftover angle iron from this. So that might be a little interesting next week. But yeah, I think if I can figure out uh, what I'm doing for the aluminum on top there, that'll be good. Um, once I figure all that out, I'll go ahead and probably pull everything off this mill. From there, I can weld it, like I've been saying, weld the thing solid, paint it, make it look pretty, add some more screws to hold all that sheet metal in, and probably just cut these two panels here and put this thing back together. And I'll actually should have an enclosure minus the doors. So inside here is um, polycarbonate for the doors. So those are 24 by 36 inch panels. So I'm gonna have to cut those down a little bit. Uh, it should be interesting. I think a jigsaw can do it from what I've seen on the internet. So after the doors, it's really just a little bit of fun stuff. It'll be the lights and some type of a controller station that'll be over on this side here on the right side. And then I can finally put an end to this project. This is video six. Hopefully we can get it done in like eight maybe eight video series that'd be nice um hopefully it doesn't go to nine or ten but who knows um i did want to caveat it it seems like man this guy's taken two months on this but i do work full time and i do have a family that wants to hang out with me and everything so um, a lot of times during the week i don't get out here in the evenings um, i usually get maybe you know six or seven hours on a saturday to really hammer some stuff out but you know, when you think it takes eight weeks, it's like, nah, it's number of hours in it is significantly less. So that is it for this week. I will see you next time.